Okay. I'm going to see what I can get done here. Uh, I found I uh, was able to talk the uh, facility I'm at, waiting on that family members having some medical issues. Uh, we're still waiting, and nothing life serious. But well, we don't know. This is a person who's advanced in years, as they say. So I found a quiet room. You're probably going to hear some noise, background noise, and things like that. Don't let it throw you. And my intention is to get this done an hour to an hour and a half, which is what they told us it would be. And then tonight I'll try to do another screencast so you have the full set of them. Okay? I apologize to those of you who are in 11, who are in 4403. I don't think there are any of you. But I had to cancel that class this morning and do a pre-recorded session before I took off driving and hither and yon. You'll find out that you've had these kinds of things occur with parents, grandparents, loved ones and others. But thank goodness we have Zoom. I have a tool here. I can record this. And so you can still have class. And you can see it, okay? Well, let's go over here to the, uh, over here to Canvas, and let's take a look at what we've got going on. Now, we're down now to, it was fall break, we're down to week nine, okay? And we've got some things going on here. First of all, you should upload, uh, uh, Excel case number 10 that you all of you should have already done that by now and then here is the trend analysis quiz okay now as I said before we're working ahead because as you saw last week these access cases start to become a little bit involved and the one that we're going to work on here case number three it's really no difference. Now, again, let me say this. If you should hear some strange background noise, don't let that bother you. Um, that's just, I, I, I wrangled some quiet space to try to get at least one of the two recordings I usually do completed. If all goes well, uh, I'll be able to, to, to uh, do another recording tonight, and you'll, uh, and you'll have everything you need, okay? Now, we're going to work on access case number three, and that's called the Braxis Office Furniture. It's over on page 182. And what we're going to do is develop an automated bill of materials. Okay? And this is this is a fairly complex task because when you create a bill of materials, you literally list the item and the quantity and the cost uh, per item that you're assembling or producing. And you're going to see that as you read through the case. Now these folks make uh, some models of, of office furniture and they're on the page 180, they're at the bottom of page 183, they start to tell you about the products uh, and all the components that go into them for each of the models, okay? So think of here's a model, then a particular box, say a desk or chair, and then the components, that's the stuff that we make up the, uh, that would make up the, uh, the furniture. And they walk through, it's pretty confusing. I mean, yeah, it's a thought, it's a word problem. And luckily for you, I've had mercy on you and, and worked through this. So as they come over to page 184, they continue on and then uh, some more information about uh, who are the who, who their suppliers are, uh, and um, their the partial bill of materials is is, is a supplied for you in the table of Braxis in the Solvent Chapter Five database. Well, let's go here to the files, okay, and let's look for the solvent, and we'll look for anything that says well, okay, and there it is, the solvent. 
6.0 solution files and the student files. Let's look at the student files first and we'll download them and then we'll get to see this case, the uh, what I call the skeleton. Now, we'll open this up. Here it is. Saw it, chapter five, and you can see, and I'm gonna enable the content. Now, you'll wanna save this to your desktop, okay? And I'm gonna put this down here. I'm gonna put solve it. Uh, I'm gonna put access case number three, or access case three, I'm gonna save it, okay? And then I'll enable the content. Make sure you save it on your, on your desktop so you can upload it when we're through. Now, let's look at this for just a moment, okay? Let's look at all of the access objects, all right? Now, you'll see in the skeleton file, as we've said before, they start you off with a table, okay? There are no other access objects in this, in this, in this database. This is what we would call a data warehouse where we have all these lists and files and things uh, there. Now here's a Braxis case number three, which is what we're working on, okay? And we're gonna open that up, and you'll see the table, and it's partially, as they tell us, it's partially done, <laughs> all right? Boy, are, is it ever. Well, let's look at C for a moment, what we're, what we're looking at, talk, talk, talk about what we're looking at, okay? I see the part code, the name of the part, and these are different models that this company makes, Empire, Class uh, Moderna and Craftsman. And, and then we see the number of components. So for example, on the, um, on the Empire, it takes six three-foot legs, okay? Uh, on the Classic, it takes six three-foot legs. On the Moderna, it takes four three-foot legs. See, you can see. Okay, well now this is kind of, as they said, <laughs> as I told you, this is a skeleton. You say, wow, there's a lot. As I look at the task, Dr. Harmon, I see a whole bunch of stuff that they want me to do. Okay, well, I'm a nice person. So here's what we're going to do. Let's uh, diminish your database for a moment. Okay. And let's go back to our files. Okay. And let's just click enter, and there's all the files. Now you're going to see something called a Braxis import. As I've said before, let a database be a database, and let a let a uh, Excel file be an Excel file. So I'm going to publish this file. It's called a Braxis import XLS. Okay. So it's published there, now you can see it, but more importantly, you can download it. So we're gonna download it to our desktop, okay? And let's, as it opens up, we'll save it. We'll get, enable the editing, okay? And I'm gonna click the File, Save As, and I'll put it, I'm going to put it on my desktop, and I'm gonna call this Abraxas Import, Mine is number eight, obviously, because I've, I've done this, you know, a few times in my life. So we're going to save this, all right? It's saved on our desktop. Now, you say, Dr. Harmon, are you going to tell me we might be able to import or interface those data? Yes, luckily for us, we can. Now, let's open up the Abraxas. Oh, look what that, now. I need to clean my screen up, first of all. Uh, here we have the part code, the part name, the unit cost and then the components for all of the products, and then the units in stock. Okay, so I've done, I've done some nice work for you. So I'm gonna close this off, and we're gonna do an import. How do, you, how do we do that? Simple, we're gonna click external data. Now this skeleton uh, table, I'm gonna close it off. So let's click external data. And you can see I can import or link data from a variety of sources. I can also export data in a, to a variety of, of, of um, formats, pardon me. So, you know, that's one of the nice things about it is 
let a database be a database, let a, an Excel file. And trust me, you probably would find it a lot easier to do the work you did in Excel and then import it. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna click uh, import and link or click Excel. And here's the dialog box and I'm gonna go look on my desktop, okay? And I'm gonna scroll around over here and I'm going to find a Braxis import. Okay, and I'm gonna import the table. Now, here in the import spreadsheet wizard, all right, we wanna make sure that we have everything here so we can take a peek at it, okay? And then we'll, and that will all start to uh, resolve itself, okay? Then we're gonna click next, and make sure that this says first row contains column headings. Why? Because what we're about to do is take that tab, take that tab or that worksheet out of that Excel um, workbook and make it a table. Okay. And so you can click next, and we'll uh, click next. So say you want to add a, access, add a primary key. Eh, why not? And we'll finish, finish, and do we want to save the import steps? Not really. Now we have, you'll see, uh, let's look up here, and you're going to see a table called uh, Abraxas. You should see a table called Abraxas Imports. And Abraxas, let's look at this, because I think I might have renamed it. Let's open it up and see it. Yep, that's the one. So it, it named it Abraxas case three, okay? And we're good to go. So this is the one we wanna use, okay? And we have this table, and let's look at, look at what all we've got now. We can take the shutter bar and let's squeeze it back at here so I can look at this and, and, and get, so we have the, uh, let's go ahead and park that. We have the ID, that's that ID that they added, the part code, the part names, we've got everything that, uh, each of the components and the numbers of units in stock. Now, as I mentioned before, to populate tables, we typ typically use a form of some kind, and we've talked about, and I think we worked with some forms, and you'll also might use some lookup tables. You remember we did those last week, okay? And so we're, we're ready to go. Now, let's go ahead and diminish this thing down, all right? And now we have some, some issues that they want, uh, some things they want us to do. So let's go down to the bottom of 184, all right? And, uh, and we've done really task number one. We put the units in stock and the unit cost of the materials. And we added some other information in there. So really we did one part A and, and, and part B. Listen, don't print out the table, all right? If you're gonna do that, take the Excel file that you had and embed it in a Word document, okay? It's just gonna be easier to handle. And, and as, you've, as you've heard me before, Creating tables in, in Access is a time-consuming, clumsy process. Now, luckily for you, you're going to go out into the real world, okay, and you're going to do some work, and you'll have a product like Oracle or SAS or SAP that will have that will handle a lot of these functions. Hopefully, though, you'll you'll, you'll have gained an appreciation for how good those people are. Okay, so we've imported the table. We've we've really done. Number one. Now they say the managers in a number of functional areas have heard of Dennis's progress. This is number two on page uh, 164, pardon me, 184. And uh, they want to know the total dollar amount of the material costs in each product type so they can more easily set approximate prices for these materials. Okay. Uh, accounting managers want to know the total dollar value of each component type in each table. 
And he says, Singh wants an estimate of the investment dollars and in inventory holdings of the component types and total dollar value of inventory holdings. There's a whole bunch of stuff that they want here, okay? Now, let's start with number two, and let's click Create, and we're gonna do a Query Design, okay? Now, I'm going to work with a, a, a Braxis underscore case underscore three, and I'm gonna add it, all right? Make sure that I've got all, everything I can see it there. All right, and now let's take a look. He says they, uh, sales managers, wanna know the total dollar amount of the material costs in each product type, so they can more easily set approximate prices for these products, okay? Each product type. Now, this is a little bit tricky, okay? And we're gonna have to, do, we're gonna have to create an operation Okay, so we're going to start with this first query and we're going to take the part code. Okay, we're going to get the part name, we're going to get the unit cost, and uh, in each product types, okay, and then we're going to take. We're going to get Empire, Classic, Moderna, Craftsman, Winston, Sterling, Executive, and Charleston. Okay? Now, let's look at this. And we basically have that table that we had imported. Let's go back down to the design view. Now, we need to write some expressions. Okay, there's a, from my machine I sent you today. All right, and I, and I do appreciate your forbearance in this, but you'll be there someday. Now, we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna create a, an expression code, total dollars, and we're gonna start with empire. And we're gonna create an, an expression. And this is going to be, we're gonna put bracket, and it will be unit cost, okay? Times empire, all right? And I'm going to copy that And I'm gonna diminish here for a second. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come across and find my first empty bin here in the query, and I'm gonna paste that in. And let's see what we get. Now, I have the total dollars in Empire, but I'm missing something, and that is I don't. I didn't use the units in stock. So let's go back down to the to the bottom here. And we're going to have to redo this. I'm going to show you how to do one of them, okay? Because I think once you've seen us do one of these, you could do all of them. And here in a moment, I'll show you how we can do a trick. At, we can do this using the report function. So we're going to take uh, total dollars empire as a unit cost times empire. Uh, times uh, the uh, units in stock. Let's see, now we wanna know, wait, I wanna look for a minute. Total uh, materials cost each product type. Okay, well then we want the units in stock. Okay, now we're cooking with oil or gas or whatever, okay? Now I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna copy it and put it back here in the expression and let's take a look at up C. Let's go up top and take a look. Now, let's look at this for just a minute and we've got the total, total dollars in Empire, okay? 
and we have the unit cost and what we don't have here what we're not showing when you go back down and show it we have the unit cost okay and we also need to show the units in stock so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna get rid of this op now I'm gonna put units in stock and then I'm gonna paste in my expression so it'll look a lot better there it is okay now I can see the units in stock now if I want to watch what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go back to the design view all right I'm gonna click here on Moderna on classic craftsman you say why are you doing that every time I click on one of those it suppresses the output now the outputs there okay but we've suppressed a bunch of these and let's go upstairs and see what it looks like and isn't that nice I have the uh, the I have the part code the part name the unit cost the number for Empire okay and then the total dollars of Empire all right and you so how did you get that well you got to take 46 cents times 4 times 56 and that ought to give you 103.4 now if you want to check yourself and check your work you can always go back to your Excel file that you imported and, and, and do that or you, you know, look folks you can do it on your calculator okay I'm up this this equals uh, uh, let's see it's well it's on area let's okay 0 0.46 we're gonna do that first uh, times 4 times and the innocent stock is 56 Voila. now I'm gonna call this I'm gonna save this as uh, M Empire uh, materials type okay so it's called Empire total materials pardon me to Empire total total cost total Empire total cost of materials and I'm going to run these together without, instead of using all. Okay, and I'll save that. There we go. Aha! He said, huh? Now, if you were listening, if you took business BISS 1103 and you were listening, you heard about a concept called algorithmic thinking. We're about to do that. I'm going to close this jewel off. I'm going to click up here and I'm going to look for queries and there's our queries okay and I'm going to copy it and I'm gonna paste it and I'm going this time I'm gonna call it um, what are the types of uh, what are the type let's see I want to look at I want to go back and open this up because I'm gonna, um, let's see we have uh, Let's do Moderna. Oh, wait a minute. Let me see. They're in the in, in the textbook. They'll tell us. Okay. Um, let's see. We've got the Empire, and I think we want the next one. We want to do is. Oh, da, 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 da. Um, let's do Moderna, okay, total cost of materials, and there it is. Now, we made a copy, and then we renamed it. Let's open this back up. You said, Dr. Harm, this isn't right because it shows empire oh yes it does but my friends 
watch what's about to happen. We're going to go back down into design view, okay? And this time, uh, we're going to do instead of uh, instead of um, instead of the part code for Empire, okay? I'm well. We're going to do. I'm going to do Moderna. And then I'm going to call this total dollars Moderna. And so I'm going to reuse. Let's let's just do this. We're going to get Moderna. Okay. Sounds like they put me near the laundry. Probably did. Now, I'm going to go back up here to this expression. And this time, I'm a, a unit cost, total dollars Moderna. Okay. And that's unit cost times Moderna. And since I can see all these right now, I've got the Empire. And I want to do classic next. So I'm going to make a note for myself okay, of what's left. And so I'm going to grab a pen here so I can find one. Ah. All right. And I'm going to do the total dollars in Moderna. And... Now, after I've done I've done Empire and Moderna, then I'm I'm also going to need to do Classic. I'm writing these down: Craftsman, Winston, Sterling, Executive, and Charleston. And it's going to be easy for us to do. And so now I've got the total dollars Moderna is the unit cost times Moderna times units in stock. And that'll be that expression. Okay. And we'll put it in there and let's run it. And there we are. Now we've got the unit cost. And we come up again with 103. Oh, four. Now let's look at that, and if we and let's close this off for just a minute. We'll save this, and let's go back and look at the table. Uh, let's go back to the tables and look at our Abraxas underscore case three table, and let's look at the part codes for the two H strut. We're going to see some differences there. When we hit some of these other uh, pro, uh, the, some of these other um, uh, models, so we're in good shape. The math works out because both Empire and Moderna use four of the two foot struts, so we're in good shape. Okay, so we'll and we'll click on here all access objects, and so we can add here the queries, and we got the Moderna total cost. All right, now. I'm going to go ahead and scroll this on up. And now the, I have classic. So I'm going to click copy. I'm going to copy that query and just click paste and it'll show up. And, and, and I'm going to call this uh, classic total cost of materials. We'll click OK. And let's open it up in design view okay and this time we'll come over here and we want classic okay and the part name and we're gonna come over here well apparently there's a phone somewhere there but uh, I'm glad it's next door this I don't think I've ever I don't think I've ever held class out of a out of a hospital. This is an interesting experience. 
Okay, so I'm going to do the uh, total dollars for classic. I'm just going to do this up here where I can see. Okay, now this time I'm going to put in total dollars classic. And we've got the unit cost times classic times units in stock. Okay, so we've got that done. Now we'll get the total dollars classic. Now they they say they want a report, okay, that outlines all of this. But what I would do is I would caution them to say, okay, I can do this for you, okay, but it's going to be a humongous amount of columns into one. As I say before, let a database be a database. So we're going to run through a series of queries here, and then if they want a report, it's simple. You could take these queries, ship them over to Excel, okay, and embed them in a query. So we got the total dollars classic. So we're going to copy that, okay, and put it over here, and we're going to run it. And there it is. So it shows us the total dollars in classic. Now, so far, so good because we know that classic, Moderna, and Empire use the same number of components okay so now when they talk about the total dollars in inventory okay uh, uh, per product all right so we're we're in good shape here so far all right and we would just we'll close this off okay and then i'm going to i'm going to uh, click on classic and I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to paste it. And then this time, uh, instead of classic, I can check that off my list. I'm going to do craftsman. So it's going to be craft. And total cost of materials. Okay. And we're going to go in there and we'll find Craftsman. There it is. And we're going to open it up. Go to the design view. And you say, okay, we're, we're just repeating a process here. Yes, we are. And I'm going to X that out. Okay. Now I'm going to come over here. And instead of classic, I'm going to put Craftsman. And that'll be total dollars craftsman. Okay. And now we're going to take that total dollars craftsman times credit time units in stock. All right. And boom, we're just going to run this. And there we go. Now, let's go back here for a moment and let's look at this Abraxas table. Now, we've done uh, Classic, Craftsman, Empire, and Moderna. And I want to make sure, okay, that we look at the Classic and see how many units. I'm looking at the two-inch strut just as kind of a test case. And let's open this up. So the two-inch strut, uh, strut, Empire needs four, Classic needs four, Moderna needs four, and Craftsman uses four of them. So we're in good shape, my friends. Okay? Now, you say, why couldn't I just take this and come over here and put and add a total cost column if I want to? And I can. Now, it will be an unwieldy kind of critter, okay? But I'm going to do that just so we can see how unwieldy it becomes. So what I'm trying to do here is we're working through each of these product groups, and as they said, they wanted to know the amount of money they've got invested in each of them, okay? And this just, in my mind, confuses everything, but I think we have a way to do this. 
So I'm going to close this off. Okay. And I'll say, and I'll save the changes. Yes. Now I'm going to create a massive query. So I'm click query design and I'll get the Abraxas underscore case underscore three. I'll add it. And we're going to add the ID, the part code, the part name. You'll see what I'm talking about here in unit cost. Okay. Uh, Empire, Classic, Moderna, Craftsman, Winston, Sterling. Now you say, whoa, this is complicated. There's a lot of detail here. Executive, Charleston, units in stock. Okay. And then I'm going to create an expression over here. And I'm going to call this, I'll come over here, it's going to be total dollars. And this, and this is going to give us the total dollars uh, per component. Per component. Okay. This is how much we have, and, and it's going to be units in stock times unit, unit cost. And I'll come over here. Okay. And I'm going to put this in here. Okay. Now, Let's run it. And there we are. Now, this is a lot of space. Okay. And now we know the amount of money tied up in the per, per component. So we, uh, and we're going to save this. Okay. As, um, uh, we're going to call this two. Uh, let's call this, um, let's see, uh, inventory investment, because that's what it really is. Now, what it doesn't do for us is give us a total all over here, okay? So I'm going to come over here to the total dollars per component. I'm going to click here and I'm here in this uh, in this in this mode and I'm gonna do the total okay okay and it's gonna ask me for a total and I'm gonna get the sum and it's eighteen thousand eight hundred eighty six dollars and let's see, do I want to format it in a particular way? And no, I'm not going to do that. So, I'm going to investment. I'm going to close this off. Make the changes. Yes. And let's go back now to this inventory investment. And I would bet you anything. Yep. One of the things that's it, well, no, wait a minute. It does show us this. Okay. So we're going to do a little bit of one more little tweak on this inventory investment. We'll go down to design view. And I'm going to get the part name and the unit cost, but I'm going to suppress Empire. I'm going to suppress the components for each of the products. Okay. Because they're interested in the total dollar value of, of, of holdings of inventory. Okay, and that's regardless. And so we shut the unit stock total cost per component. Now let's go upstairs and look at this and see. Ah, not so ungainly at all. Isn't that pretty? Now that's nicely done. Okay, and we'll save this. And now we have the inventory investment. Okay, now we had created, we, we had started doing some component, uh, some cost per model, if you will, okay? And so we know the classic total, the Craftsman total, Empire, and, you know, classic Craftsman, uh, 
Empire. Do we have Moderna there? I thought we had Moderna there as well. And Moderna. And so all we would have to do would just be to repeat and do this for the remainder, Winston, Sterling, Executive, and Charleston. Okay, so we've done the total in inventory, and we've, well, we've, we've basically done, uh, the, but let's just, let's forge ahead with this. <laughs> and so let's close this off, this inventory investment, which is nicely done. Notice how we use the suppression on it, okay, to give us a query. Now, when we do our report, if we do a report, this will be much easier to work with, okay? Uh, and we're going to click on Craftsman, and I'm going to click Copy, and I'm going to paste it again. All right. And this time it's going to be um, Winston. Okay. Click OK. And let's go down here and find Winston. And there's Winston. Let's go back in here and open it up. And you'll see we need to go into the design view. All right. And this time, uh, instead of, um, we're going to get classic. And pardon me, instead of classic, we're going to get Winston. And here's that expression again. You see, we're, doing it, we're using an algorithm. Okay, and that's going to be uh, um, and I'm just going to undo this for a minute. And you're going to cost times Winston. And just to make it easier on ourselves, I'm going to copy this. We, we'll, we're doing Winston right now. We're also going to need to do um, Sterling. And, and we want to do, uh, so we'll have Winston Sterling and executive. These are the types of products. And then we'll have Charleston. Okay, so we have, we've got the Winston, okay, and we have that expression created. So we'll just total dollars per component, uh, and we'll put, uh, we're going to call this Winston total cost of materials. And this would be, see, so we'll get this. And we're going to make, we'll copy that in there. And instead of Winston, this will be Sterling. Okay. And then we'll get rid of this, we'll control, and this time, instead of Winston, it will be executive. Somebody's got some stuff I need to pick up uh, next door. Executive total cost of materials, and then Get rid of that, and this will be Charleston. So 
So what we've done is we've used some algorithmic thinking to create exp expressions for Winston, Sterling, Executive, and Charleston. And I think that'll be all of them. So I'm going to put this will be Winston. Copy that. Okay. And we're still working on number two. And we'll just run this because what we're doing is here it is. This is Winston, total cost of materials. All right. Now we got that closed off. And yes. Now this time I'm going to copy Winston. I'm going to paste it. And this will be, we've done Winston, and this will be Sterling cost of materials. And let's go into the design view. Make sure that instead of Winston, we have Sterling, and we'll put in our expression. Okay. And this will be the sterling total cost of materials. And we'll pop that in there and go, Dr. Harmon, you are my hero. Yes, I am. Imagine what kind of fun you'd have trying to put this together. Okay. And now let's close that off. All right, and we're going to copy Sterling, and we'll paste it. And this time, instead of Sterling, it's going to be executive. I didn't, I didn't spell it. Executive. Cost of materials. And so there's executive cost of materials. Let's go to the design view on it. And instead of sterling, I'm going to put in executive. And I already have my expression built for executive. And we'll run it. And there we are. Now, one bothersome thing is that I keep showing four units for executive. And I want to go back up here for a minute, look at this, and see what we got going on. Well, okay. Yes, of course. They're all going to be four. I'm looking at the strut. I'm just checking the checking the work a little bit here. Okay. And so far, so good. So we've got the executive total cost material. Yes, we'll save that. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to copy it. And people get nervous about where do I paste anywhere? It's the naming of it that's important here anyway. And so this is going to be, we've done executive. This will be Charleston. How many of you knew that Charleston is named after Charles, the great entertainer? That's not true. It's simply not true. Charleston total cost of materials. Okay. And I'm going to do a little work on Charleston here, on the design view. And this time I want Charleston. And we'll redo, we'll get rid of this. And we'll input this expression. See how? How we just used this is this is why we talk about algorithmic thinking, because you see, the th when you look at this expression, what changes? The name of the material. Otherwise, it's unit cost times units in stock. Okay. So we're we're, we're getting that accomplished, and let's go up and take a peek. Okay, and Charleston.
we've got that done. So what have we got left there? So let's go across. I want to come back up here for a minute and let's go back up for just a second. Let's go down here for the design view. Part name. We'll say yes to this for a minute. I'm going to look up here for a moment. Let's go back up here because I'm not I'm not liking what I'm seeing here. So, now, Winston has a two-inch strut. Okay, it only needs two of them. All right. The only one that deviates, and I'm looking at the two inch strut, is the Winston. Okay, everything else uses four. So I want to go back down to the Winston query for a minute and take a look at it. Is this the only one that does not have? Okay. Ah, okay. Well, no, no, no. Oh, we're good. We're good. I just didn't trust. I didn't trust uh, my brain. But we're good. Yeah. Yeah. So we're good. That's the Winston cost of materials. This is for Braxis period. Okay, so we're good. So we've done uh, we, we've done all of them in their cost of materials. So we've done uh, number two. Okay. Now they talk about number three. Uh, this is at number three at the bottom. So we've done number one and number two, and we can put these into reports now. Again, let's take a look for a moment at Charleston. Okay. I'm going to open that. If I if I put this over in a report form in Access, it'll look. I can make it look really nice because I have so few columns to work with. Or I could or I could export it out. Okay, uh, to Excel. If I want to, I can close. I can take the shutter. Okay, I'll take my shutter here and close it back. And I can use this navigation pane and boom. I can print screen this and put it into a report if I want. It's up to me, okay? But my point is this, don't overcrowd the report. I'm gonna show what this looks like. I'm gonna close this off and let's go over here to the report wizard, okay? And I'm gonna get the query, the Charleston total cost of materials, I'm gonna get everything. Click next, okay? And do I want to do any grouping levels? Let's uh, group it by part code. And we'll click next. And anything I want in ascending order? I want, well, I want the part names in ascending order. And I have some summary options if I want, and I can get the, well, the sums, for I don't want to do that. Let's just, just cancel those out. And we'll click next because we have those already. Okay. Now it shows us. Now you can see I don't have that many uh, fields to work with, but I'm going to go to the layout view on this. Okay. On the part name, I'm going to scroll this all the way over here. Okay. And the unit cost, I'm going to move it all the way over here. Same thing with the unit cost. So let's see, you see this is a little bit more work than you may want to have to do. You see, 
we just kind of mess something up. So we'll pop that back. So I'll take the unit cost and move it right here. And then I've got Charleston. And I've got uh, units in stock. So I've got a little bit of problem here because I got to get this lined up with, with how many components Charleston uses. And then I have the units in stock and the cost of materials. So you can see this starts to get a little bit unwieldy. So and it's trying, see we're, we're, we're dealing with this kind of stuff and, and, and you've got better things to do than this. So do I. Boy, if you're out of work, you certainly do. And so, well, we'll just move these on over. And you see, we're always, this is a waste of time simply because I have a nice query there. I could export to Excel and look just as good or better. I could format it a lot easier. And fortunately for you, you'll be working with some true, truly good commercial products that understand the frustrations I'm feeling right now and that you'll be feeling when you get to be, do this for real. And uh, it's stock, total cost, of materials. You see how much work we did. We're still not through. So you understand what I'm talking about. So, you know, let's just close this report and it'll say, yeah. But you can see what I'm talking about now. Uh, I would just take this Charleston total cost of materials. I'd open that baby up. I and I'd, I'd import it to Excel and print it up. Put in, you know, put in bold case, etc. Make it into a table, okay? And you'd be good to go. So we've done number one. We've done number two, and we're down to number three, okay? And this is uh, Haney Corporation, a regular value customer, has ordered tables for the new Provo office. They need five Winston and 38 Sterling tables. So they want five Winston and 38 Sterling. Okay. And they want a detailed material requirements report for the order. Uh, and so we're going to do that. So we're going to click create. And we're going to do a query design, okay? And we're coming here to Braxis underscore case underscore three underscore, and we're going to add it. And now I'm going to take, and I'm going to get D D D D D D the ID, the part code, the part name. And I'm going to get, and he wants to do Winston and Sterling. And I want the unit cost. And I'm going to get uh, Winston. And what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to get the components for Winston. And then I'm going to create an expression called, uh, let me see here. Uh, Winston. component cost, and this will be, we're going to put bracket, unit cost, times, that'll be Winston. times five, okay? I'm gonna create an expression here and we're gonna stop and see what this looks like, okay? So we'll put my expression here.
Let's go back up here for a minute. I don't like them. Component cost. Let's spell component correctly. So I'm going to wipe this out of here. I found a lot of people get nervous when they work in here. So just work over here and then cut and paste. Component. So this will tell us the component cost per item for Winston. Let's see what it gives us. There we are. Okay. And the why you say, well, where did you get the 460? Well, think about it for an instant. Winston need every Winston table has two of these struts. So if you're making five tables, you gotta have you know five times two. And everything you see there is gonna be, you know. Uh, uh times you know two times five let's look down here times five yeah i know the math is right up here let's look down here and see uh 60 times 0.89 we can always just check it on the calendar equals 0 0.60 times uh how much is that point Eight nine equals fifty three. Okay. And we took the eighty nine. Okay. And oh, there we go. Eighty nine times twelve. Do this again. Watch. This is going to equal. I'm going to do the, the I'm going to do the very bottom one, the one the one foot six inch bolt, and this is going to equal. The unit cost is 0 0.99. Okay. Winston uses 12, so it'll be times 12. That's 12 per table. We're going to make five tables. And we'll up. So we're good. So we're going to call this, uh, we're going to save this as the Haney order. Okay, now we're not through, obviously, not odor, <laughs> but order. O R D E R. Haney order. All right, now, we're still not through because not only did they order five Winston, they ordered 38 Sterling tables. Ah, so let's go back down here into the design view. And I'm going to click uh, Sterling. Okay. And then I'm going to do the component cost and this will be the sterling component cost. Component cost. And this will be unit cost times sterling times 38. Because they want 38 tables. Right? Yeah. Yahoo. So now we're ready to do the sterling component cost. I'll put this in here and let's see what we got. And there we go. Now we can see the number of components and then we see the component cost for Winston and Sterling component cost. And if we want to know the, the grand total for each, it's simple. Okay, I'm gonna come up here, uh, click on home. I'm gonna come up here to the to the total okay. and I want the sum okay and over here I want the sum and I'll close this off 
Now save it, yes. Now let's open it back up. And this should be the Haney order. And here it is. Okay. And we know that the Haney order, we know what it'll cost. And we know Sterling component cost. And let's go into the design beyond this and make, wait, oh, pardon me. Let's go back in here to Haney and go to the design view. And let's look at this. I'm going to call this total Winston component costs. I'm going to do the same thing over here for Sterling. Put total. And here we are, nicely done. So we have the total Winston component costs, the total Sterling component costs. We'll click on the total here, all right? And we get the sum. And we'll click on the total here and we'll get the sum, all right? And if I wanna know, for example, the average unit cost, I can do that and put that average in there. And we've done number three. Number four, uh, they want us to find Chapin Milling is having financial difficulties. He's worried about these are MK. He's worried about those uh, problems and the implication may have a Haney contract. Print out listing the components supplied by Chapin Milling, sorted by part code to facilitate the investigation. All righty, we're going to do that. We're going to click Create, Query Design. We're going to Braxis underscore case underscore three. We'll add that. Okay, now I'm going to get the ID, the part code, and the part name. Okay, and under part code, under the criteria, uh, I'm going to put uh, quotes, double quote. Okay, I'm going to put double quote. Uh, Asterisk C asterisk double quotes. Now let's see what we get. C. We're gonna do double quotes, then asterisk, then C, then asterisk apartment, then asterisk again, then double quotes. Now let's see what we get. Yep. We get all of the parts that are made by Chapin. So we're going to save this query as Chapin Milling Components. And we could add on to that however you wish. And those are the Chapin milling components, and so that's number four, okay? Number five is engineering wants a list of the components sorted by value, and uh, okay, we can do that. Let's close this. And we'll click query design, and we're going to get a Braxis underscore case underscore three underscore. There we go. And they want the uh, parts list of the components sorted by value. 
So I'm going to get the ID, the part code, the part name, the unit cost, and and I guess it's a little bit unclear to me. So you're going to get run into some of these when you're out at work. Sorted by a list of the components sorted by. So I'm going to assume they mean just the parts and their unit cost. So since we've got that, I'm going to sort them in descending order. Okay, and I'm going to run this. And there's the part name and the parts, the unit cost of them, okay, in descending order. And when they say components, you know, um, you know, we could we could go ahead and add in. If we add in, then we're looking at model components. So I'm going to say this is uh, we're going to save this as uh, engineering uh, I'm going to call it engineering cost request, okay? Does it make it a little bit unclear there? Now, on number six, it says, suggest any improvements or additions to the bill of materials as it currently exists. Could the, it be expended to encompass other aspects of production management or any other associated documents? Of course it could. And there are some things we could do with this. Let's go back up to... Uh, Hudson Palmer underscore Hudson underscore Palmer threads find that that uh, that table that we had imported pardon me we don't want Hudson we don't have Braxis earth to me now there are some things we could do to improve this first of all okay we could create some lookup tables, okay, for the number of components used for a given model, okay? And we've done lookup tables before. So we could do that. Um, we could do a lookup table of all the part codes and the part names. Okay, so we 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 know that we can we can use some lookup tables here. We can literally create a, a lookup table for every one of these, but certainly the the part code, the part name, the unit cost. And we could do it for you know each of these, and that would be an improvement. Uh, could you add some other things in? Sure. We have we come right all over here. The units in stock, okay, and uh, we could you know we could come in and we could look at units in stock, and we could look at units needed. And that's going to be Empire plus Classic plus Moderna plus Craftsman. In other words, all of these, the number of components they need versus the number in stock. Now, frankly, um, that starts to get us into the realm of doing some data crunching. So there, there are some improvements that we could do. Okay. Well, that this would be part one. Okay. Of of um of of the of the of the work for today, and I think what I'll do is create just show you a couple of lookup tables later on. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have this file. I'm going to save the database as okay. And I access case 
I'm going to call this uh, access case three. And I'm going to put it on my desktop. Oh, it'll be good to go. Okay. And then let me open this back. Okay. And let me find access case three. Wherever it is, it's here. So here it is. There it is. And let me see here for a minute. Did we do all those orders and all that stuff for this one too? Let's see this for a second. We did the import, the handy orders. Okay. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, folks. I'm going to upload this access case three into the files area. All right. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to upload from my desktop and I'm going to find access case three and I'm going to open it up. And that's the one you should uh, up, upload. Now, let me see if I can find it. Did it upload or not? Should have. Okay. Now, this is weird. All righty. I'm going to upload. I'm going to go up here to my desktop, access case three. I'm going to open it. and see if it uploads it. Let's try this. I'm gonna rename it. All right, now let's see if I can upload it into the files the desktop and let's refresh that may be the issue and huh well it's not playing nice with me so folks instead of that one because here's one that's done all this is this one's done so done case three so i'm going to publish it and the one you want to use is this one access accdb3 done sp15 i don't know why that access file wouldn't upload. That's just strange. I don't get it. I'll go back here one more time. Maybe I didn't do my, my download like I should. I'm gonna do this for a minute. Go back into, into the program. Got tables. Huh. Weird. Okay. 
That is strange. Because when I open this up, It's all there. Oh. I'm gonna try saving this as something different. Uh, save the database as, I'm gonna put it on my desktop. And I'll save it. Let's see if that'll do it for us. And I'll try, if not, I'm kind of hard pressed to think what I'll be dealing with here. Let's try it one more time. Then we may be encountering some security issues with this. I'm not sure. Well, I think what's happened is, is that it's coming in as in all files. And it's just, it's not accepting it. So we've been through that adventure and I'm going to stop now. And then tonight probably is going to be way after six o'clock. Um, Cause I've, I've got to get back in there. I'm sure they're, they're, the uh, they're finishing up and um, all else fails upload this one access three done okay and we'll be in good shape now I'm also going to do this I'm going to make publish this one as well here's another one this is access case three work in progress uh just strange and we'll go from there okay thank you for your time and i'll stop this sharing